Israel has a genocidal intent against the Palestinians in Gaza. The charge of genocide leveled against Israel is not only false, it's outrageous. The highest court of the United Nations has ruled that Israel must take all measures to prevent genocidal acts in Gaza. The court's January ruling also included this provision for Israel. To prevent and punish the direct and public incitement to commit genocide. But Israel has been accused of allowing controversial statements to continue. Since Hamas's attack on Israel in October 2023 and Israel's subsequent military campaign in Gaza, both sides have used inflammatory language. BBC News Arabic asks, what action has Israel taken since the ruling at the International Court of Justice? We investigate what's been said publicly since then by Israeli leaders and in the media and examine what Israeli soldiers in Gaza have been posting online. Could these statements reach the level of inciting genocide? The ICJ case is against Israel, a signatory to the Genocide Convention. So that is the focus of this film. But what about Hamas? Why aren't their leaders, who are accused of war crimes, being taken to the ICJ? Genocide is defined as acts committed with intent to destroy, in whole or in part, a national, ethnical, racial or religious group. The convention outlines five punishable acts, one of which is the direct and public incitement, or call to action to commit genocide. This crime is also illegal under Israeli national law. We the deputy speaker, a member of the Prime Minister's Likud party, made these comments weeks after the ICJ's order. He'd previously called to burn Gaza in a post on X. He said he deleted it following a request from the platform, but he didn't apologize. And controversial comments have been made even by members of the government. <laughs> This call by Israel's national security minister was made just two days after the ICJ ruling. Before becoming a minister, Mr. Bengvir was convicted on eight charges, including inciting violence and supporting a terrorist organization. The minister has been calling for Palestinians to leave Gaza since October 7th, saying Israelis should settle there and that this is the right thing to do according to the Torah. A similar sentiment was also echoed by Israeli soldiers on the ground in Gaza before the ICJ order. A human rights organization has been collecting cases they argue are inciting genocide and include Minister Ben Gvir's speeches. We consider the, the calling to uh, displacement of, of the Gaza population as part of the ethnic cleansing that is ongoing in Gaza, that is part of the, uh, of the genocide. Ethnic cleansing has not been recognized as an independent crime under international law. The UN defines it as using force or intimidation to remove persons of giving groups from the area. Their commission of experts say such acts could also fall within the meaning of the Genocide Convention. Certain statements, let's say, by Itamar ben and others, you know, I'm definitely not going to defend such statements, but they do not rise to the level of genocide, certainly. In a lobby meeting at the Knesset, Minister ben set out plans for settlements in Gaza and the immigration of Palestinians who live there. <laughs> The Voluntary Migration Plan, which would involve resettling Gazans, a population of more than 2 million, reportedly to the Congo among other countries, has seen support from dozens of cabinet ministers, 
members of the Knesset, and some from the Prime Minister's Likud party. Mr. Bengvir and Mr. Vaturi did not respond to the BBC's request for comment. There have been videos since October 7th by IDF soldiers mocking and celebrating the destruction of Gaza. We can see that it's impossible to return Gaza to what it was because 70% of it has been destroyed, because the over 33,000 people have been killed, 14,000 of whom are children. So the incitement against the people of Gaza has translated, in fact, into, in, into uh, concrete actions. So there is a direct link. I mean, it cannot be missed. The IDF told the BBC that it handles videos posted by soldiers with command and disciplinary measures, and that in some of the examined cases, it is concluded that the expression or behavior of the soldiers in the footage is inappropriate. During the ICJ hearing in January, South Africa claimed... Israel's political leaders, military commanders, and persons holding official positions have systematically and in explicit terms declared their genocidal intent. And these statements are then repeated by soldiers on the ground in Gaza. And gave this example. This speech was addressing soldiers before the ground offensive in Gaza. Amalek comes from a biblical story where Israelites are ambushed by the Amalek people and God commands their destruction, women and children included. The war against Amalek is described as a mitzvah war under Judaism. It includes defending Jewish life and sovereignty. It is a war commanded by God and it's obligatory to fight. I think Netanyahu's reference to Amalek in the modern context of this war was highly problematic because it was in a way kind of dog whistling. In a way it was um, using a term that's vague and could be understood in different ways in order to rally support, um, especially among the religious um, camp. Prime Minister Netanyahu's office says he was talking about Hamas in connection to Amalek and not Palestinian civilians. To understand the reach of the term Amalek, the BBC investigated online mentions since the start of the war filtering those to ones associated with Gaza war. And narrowing that down further to mentions just in Hebrew, we collected over 3,600 mentions and found they reached a total of 6 million users. Within a time frame of September 2023 to June 2024, mentions speaks around the time of Mr. Netanyahu's speech, and again at the beginning of December when this video went viral. This religious language and ideology has become part of the messaging within Israel, at least in some communities. In March, an annual conference took place for all Zionist yeshivas, Jewish religious schools in Israel. Rabbi Eliyahu Mali gives a lecture which he describes as being about the treatment of civilians in Gaza. The following clip went viral and has been watched over a million times. We have added our own verified translations. One description of a mitzvah war, which Rabbi Mali discusses in his lecture, includes a commandment that states, do not allow a soul to live. Can the mitzvah war be a genocidal war? Well, I mean, it's a bit anachronistic to talk about genocide when you're referring to texts that are three and a half thousand years ago. Um, back then, the term genocide wasn't applied. Um, taking ver verbally and, and literally um, ancient wars and applying those standards to today would be, um, could be considered genocide. The original video posted by the yeshiva conference was taken down, but by that time, clips have been copied and shared. 
We contacted Rabbi Eliyahu Mali about his lecture. His legal representative replied, saying that the rabbi's lecture had been grossly misrepresented and that he made it very clear that anyone following the biblical commandment today would be causing the army and the nation extreme harm. The rabbi said that it is forbidden to harm the civilian population from a child to an old man. We asked for a copy of the full 47-minute video but did not receive a response. We managed to track down the whole lecture from a different source, and Rabbi Mali does conclude the following. However, earlier in the lecture he discusses the position of Jewish texts in relation to civilian populations and says this. This unsubstantiated claim was followed by a question from the audience. The rabbi also recounts a conversation he had with his son who went to fight after the attacks by Hamas on October 7th. <laughs> After examining open source information, the BBC found that Rabbi Mali is the head of a yeshiva that is part of a network receiving funding from the Israeli government, specifically the Ministry of Defense. The yeshivas have a combined total of over 10,000 students who mix Torah study with military service, and many are active in the Israel Defense Forces. Israeli authorities are considering whether to open a criminal investigation into Rabbi Mali's lecture on suspicion of incitement to genocide, violence and terrorism. Israeli media outlet Haaretz reported that police are recommending the case be dropped and that a final decision will be made by the state prosecutor. The BBC has not been able to verify this. The case application was made by Itai Mak, a lawyer representing the Israeli anti-racism organization Tag Meir, who gave us this update. We are waiting for the state prosecutor to decide if the police should open a criminal investigation into Rabbi Mali. If they don't, it will be a message to the far right in Israel that they can continue the incitement, not only regarding civilians in Gaza, but also in the West Bank and non-Jews inside of Israel. Israel has long accused Hamas and many Palestinian and Arab leaders of using language that is anti-Semitic and sometimes with genocidal intent. Calls for violence against Israelis and Jews are also shared on Arabic language social media. The BBC analyzed online posts in Arabic since October 7th and found at least 6,000 posts using the term kill the Jews or Israelis, which reached around 4 million users. Hamas calls for the end of Israeli military occupation in Gaza and the West Bank and for Israel to be replaced by an Islamic State. They use the language of militant jihad, which, like the mitzvah war in Judaism, is a form of religiously sanctioned warfare. The annihilationist language of Hamas's charter is repeated regularly by its leaders. <laughs> Since the attacks on October 7th, when around 1,200 people were killed, the majority civilians, and 252 were taken hostage, some Hamas officials have said they will repeat the acts. 
انه صير لازم نقدمها وحنقدمها مره ثانيه وثالثه 7 اكتوبر فتح الطريق الاوتوستراد هاي واي كبير نحو ازاله اسرائيل and there are widespread calls for Hamas proscribed as a terrorist group by the US, UK and other western countries to be held to account it's quite clear that they do have genocidal intent and we hear very little about investigating Hamas and I think that's a real missing piece in, in this entire conflict. Hamas cannot be taken to the ICJ because it is a group governing a territory not legally recognized as a state, though its leaders have been accused of crimes against humanity by the separate International Criminal Court. When assessing genocide, one is to look at the words spoken, uttered by leaders, but also other two elements, the capacity to commit genocide, mm. which Hamas per se doesn't seem to have. Israel is a signatory to the Genocide Convention and says it upholds international standards. Its prime minister and defense minister also have arrest warrants being sought against them at the ICC. Israel has conducted this war by fighting Hamas. Hamas ha hides behind civilians and inevitably, some of those civilians have uh, regrettably and tragically been harmed. Hamas did not respond to the BBC's request for comment. Broadcasters and the media shape public opinion. As such, what they say is significant. Here is one post-January exchange. <laughs> The Patriots is a popular current affairs talk show broadcast daily on Israel's right-wing channel 14. It's seen viewership skyrocket since October 7. <laughs> These comments were broadcast after Hamas reported that dozens of civilians in Gaza were killed in an operation to assassinate a senior member of Hamas. Prime Minister Netanyahu has continued to give interviews to Channel 14, despite reportedly boycotting most Israeli channels since the start of the war in Gaza. Controversial comments have also been broadcast on Israel's most watched commercial TV channel, Channel 12. In Israel, as in many countries around the world, media organizations are held to account. Regulators, which is the state, have to make sure that uh, public broadcasting is not exploited. It's not calling for genocide. It's showing a, you know, disturbing lack of empathy for uh, people in Gaza and what they're going through right now. The BBC contacted state regulators, both broadcasters and journalists, for comment and only received a response from Yehuda Schlesinger, who highlighted the atrocities on October 7, and the civilians, including children who were killed or taken hostage by Hamas and other militant groups. Two days before the court hearing in January, Israel's Attorney General said any statement calling for intentional harm to civilians contradicts the policy of the State of Israel and may amount to a criminal offense, including the offense of incitement. Currently, several such cases are being examined by Israeli law enforcement authorities. The ICJ ordered Israel to submit a report within one month, detailing the action it has taken to investigate and prosecute possible instances of incitement. The court confirmed that the report was received in February, but nothing else has been made public. Uh, we have been uh, very um, worried that uh, Israelis are exposed to such incitement without any uh, uh, law enforcement uh, reaction, and that Israelis who incite to genocide or use genocidal uh, rhetoric um, are even today immune from uh, prosecution. Whether there are investigations, of course, depends on whether in their view, 
uh, any arguable incitement to genocide has happened. Israeli media is reporting an investigation into Mr. Bengvir for incitement has been opened. Mr. Bengvir reacted to the report, saying, Unbelievable, the state attorney is trying to indict an Israeli minister for inciting against enemy state citizens who danced on the blood of our soldiers on October 7. The BBC contacted Israel's state attorney, police commissioner and Ministry of Justice for comment. Only the Ministry of Justice replied, saying they have to balance the constitutional right to freedom of speech while safeguarding against harmful incitement. In that, law enforcement authorities constantly act to curtail incitement offenses, and these efforts have been prioritized by Israel's Attorney General in recent months. What happens if Israel does not comply with the ICJ? It's not a criminal court, so it doesn't sentence anyone to jail. It makes rulings, which are in the, usually ignored by the, by the countries against whom they go. The ICJ only issues orders, but enforcement falls to the UN Security Council and member states. So if Israel does not comply, it could theoretically face economic and trade sanctions, arms embargoes, and travel bans. But this could be vetoed by its allies at the UN, in particular the US. Contrary to allegations against Israel made by the International Court of Justice, what's happening is not genocide. We reject that. However, more countries have come out in support of the case against Israel. 13 countries and territories, including those of Spain and Ireland, intend to join South Africa in accusing Israel of genocide in the Gaza Strip. Once part of the case, those countries will be able to make submissions and speak at public hearings. I think it's really time for accountability at the international level. And I say so in the interest of both Palestinians and Israelis. The ICJ issued the interim order because a final verdict will take years. And while there's no end in sight to this deadly and long-standing conflict between Israelis and Palestinians, inflammatory language from both sides continues. It's unclear what Gaza will look like or how it will be governed once a final ruling is eventually issued.